Welcome to our special Yen Ken Cook. Today, we're going to celebrate the Chinese New Year. First, we'll say Gong Hei Fa Choi. Everybody. Gong Hei Fa Choi. You just wish me a happy and prosperous Chinese New Year. Fa Choi means wealth and prosperity. Fa Choi doesn't mean a fat bok choy. The first dish is a very symbolic dish, and it's a vegetarian dish. I call this a Buddhist delight. It is very customary to have vegetarian dishes on Chinese New Year. Ancient Chinese custom forbids using sharp objects like knife in the house during the first day of Chinese New Year. We're supposed to give ourselves a peaceful, peaceful beginning. So for the same reason, we are supposed to stay home the first day of the Chinese New Year to celebrate, to enjoy with our loved ones and, and our family. That's why you stay at home to have, do everything at home. Not only that, you're not supposed to wash your hair the first day. And you're also, you're not supposed to mop your, the floor and clean up your house the first day because you don't want to get rid of all the good fortune come upon your door. Now, in this particular dish, it's very, very easy to do. What I'm going to do is something, everything is vegetarian. I start from here. This is cloud ear. This is a, some form of mushroom. It's called, also called wan yi. This is cellophane noodle, already soaked for about 10 to 15 minutes. Made from bean thread noodle. Tofu, carrot, bamboo shoot, gingo nuts. It's no big deal, but what a name. Ging Go nut! Glad <laughs> new nut. And then green onion and gorgeous looking baby corn. And not only that, we have some water chestnut. This is fresh water chestnut. Napa cabbage. And this is very interesting. This is lily butt. Tied it in a knot. Originally, it looks like this. I'm open this up. You see, it looks like this. You tie it in a knot. The idea is so when you cook it, the darn thing won't fall apart. And also, when the darn thing is moving around, it looks kind of strange. So I tied a little knot. So now it doesn't look strange. It looks perfect. And also, I have mushroom and dry bean curd stick, OK? This is hay-like seaweed. It's black moss. It's, some, it's not a seaweed. It's a moss. Now, I am going to get ready to cook by first heating up our wok. And then I use about a teaspoon or so of vegetable oil because of vegetarian cooking. And then move them around, make sure they cool the entire cooking surface. And then we are going to cook. First, we're going to cook the vegetable. It takes a little bit longer to cook. And of course, because you use vegetarian broth, you're not going to use any beef broth or stock or chicken stock. For flavor, the most important thing is coming out from the vegetable. See, mushroom has a lot of flavor. And carrot also have a lot of flavor. So we cut this carrot up. First, we'll put, cut up the garlic. <laughs> garlic. Even my mother thought I was pretty quick. <laughs> she is quicker. <laughs> Set it aside, garlic and ginger, give some flavor, okay? And then, while you're doing that, also put the vegetable, which is, takes a little bit longer to cook, which is mushroom. You want the flavor out of it. And then, napa cabbage. Oh, look at this. And then, cut up some carrot. Look at what you're doing, why you are doing it. <laughs> And then toss it. You see, this is a non-stick wok, cooking surface. But I can use this spatula because it's a very unique non-stick cooking surface. 
And then we put the rest of the ingredient. Okay, dry bean curd stick, cloud ear, hair like seaweed, lily butt or golden lily butt, and then tofu, ding, go nut. <laughs> wow, look at this. I'll save this for myself. And then, look at this. You got a lot of ingredient here. It is very heavy. Tough to make a living. <laughs> look at this, nice and colorful. Add a tiny bit of soy sauce. About two to three tablespoons of soy sauce. And then, in this mixture, you have vegetarian broth. You have a tiny bit of cooking wine. And also, we have a tiny bit of fermented soybean curd, which is natural tofu. This piece is one piece of this. You can mash it up and then use it as a flavoring. Then you let it simmer for approximately two to three minutes. It's very easy to do. While I'm simmering this, I'm gonna show you this. Some of the ingredients that I use that you probably have never seen. This is cellophane noodle. Look at this. This is bean curd, dry bean curd stick, made from soy bean curd. And this is hair like seaweed. It looks exactly like mine. <laughs> see this? Can you see this? This is a black moss. This is a mushroom, shiitake mushroom, or donggu. This is a very expensive one. This is a cheap one. You can have this one. I'm gonna keep this too. <laughs> this is a golden lily bud. Gum chum. This is a cloud ear, okay? All of these ingredients. I'm gonna set this aside because I am ready to serve this wonderful dish. Very easy to do. Everybody can do it, and we put this right in the middle so everybody can see it. When it's done, look at this. I want to show you how wonderful. Put them all together. Perfect. See that? This is colorful and nutritious. It will delight not only the Buddhists, but everybody here as well as at home. You might wonder, what does a Buddhist monastery look like? Let me take you to one. The cuisine of China is as ancient as its religion. Many of today's Chinese vegetarian dishes can be traced back to these temples. Buddhism came to China from India in the 8th century AD. The monks live in a pure and simple life. Meat is forbidden in the daily diet. As a result, we can thank them for the great variety of vegetarian dishes in Chinese cuisine. On the second day of New Year, which we normally call Hoi Ni, which literally means we open up the New Year. It also means once again, we can fix some meat dishes like the royal lion's head. Lion's head, lion is a mystical animal. It symbolizes power and strength, like the one right here. It is alive, it is breathing. I think it also needs a mouthwash. <laughs> Lions normally are built, put right in front of the entrance of pa palace, imperial palace, banks, and big mansions to stand guard, to ward off evil spirit, and also to protect, to give security. So not only lion is a mystical, and also, of course, it looks wonderful and looks nice. New Year celebration would not complete without lion dance. Now here, in this particular dish, it is very, very simple. All we have is simple dish with simple ingredient, but a lot of symbolic meaning. You start with about one and a half pound of ground pork and about quarter of a pound to about quarter of a cup of dry shrimp, couple pieces of green onion, and about quarter of a cup to half a cup of water chestnut. Once again, I want to quickly show you how easy it is to chop water chestnut. Okay, put over here, you go like this. See this way, you do not, you basically already chop it up. All done, you see how easy? Do not just put it over here and smash it like this. If you do that, you lose half of it. <laughs> Never do it like this, unless you have 
10 and a half tons of this, you don't care about it, then you do it like that. And then we're going to marinate this meatball in approximately one egg, one and a half tablespoon soy sauce, mix them all up, and also about a tablespoon of dry sherry or wine. And also you can use Xiaoxing wine and also use a tiny bit of cornstarch and shape into meatball. And then I'm going to shape this into a meatball. Okay, shape into gigantic meatball. While you're doing that, I'm going to heat up my wok because I'm going to quickly oil blanch it and brown it and seal in the juice. It's kind of fun. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I practiced short put with this darn thing. <laughs> you're lucky. Today, I have total control myself. Okay, you shape this up. Depends on how much time you have. You should do all of this while you're watching the Yang Ken Cook Show. Your four gigantic meatball. Of course, wipe out your hand first. And then we're gonna graciously, very carefully, deep fry this. Slide it down like this. Slide it down. Oil blanching technique. Basically, what I'm doing is browning it and sealing the juice. Why I'm doing this, I'm gonna get ready a tiny, tiny bit, eight to nine to 10 pieces of Napa cabbage, okay? Like this. And then put them all together. Now, look at this. One, two, three, four. Can everybody see this? Now, when this is all nice and done, we will Get ready, move these around. Get ready, one of these chopstick. Nice and golden brown. In the meantime, can you see how nice and golden brown is working out? Basically, you're sealing into the juice. So it forms a nice meatball, so when you do it, it would not fall apart. And then after that, I'm gonna put it in the microwave, when you do this at home, you can brace it in a saucepan. Wow, look at this, gigantic meatball. I told you, basically what I'm doing is browning it. After this, I'm gonna lay this out, drain it really well, lay this right over here for gigantic meatball, okay? And then I chop, press some garlic, just press it, and I put it right here Chop up some ginger slices. One, two, three, four, five. If you have time, you do six or seven or eight <laughs> or ten. If you don't want it, you can just julienne this. <laughs> Sprinkle around. And then we are going to put it over here. And then we could microwave this. If you cook it in a conventional way, by doing it in a casserole dish, you should do it for about half an hour. Magic. <laughs> then, the next dish I want to show you is, now, of course, oh, of course you cannot microwave the damn thing unless you put the broth See, everybody occasionally make mistake like me. <laughs> Broth, one and a quarter of a cup, and then salt, sugar, and white pepper. Mix them all up. And then a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. And once again, we'll do it one more time. <laughs> See, when you have fun, you can do it up to three times. Depends. <laughs> now, when this is ready, I'm gonna show you quickly how to make another dish, which is very easy to do. Right now, are you getting hungry yet? Yeah. 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 Let's bring out the crystal and serve what we call the next dish, crystal wrap, sang choi bao. Lettuce also have a symbolic meaning. Sang means birth, develop. Choi means wealth. We serve you this, that means I wish you good health and also wish you good fortune and prosperity, okay? I want to make this a little bit different. Normally, you go to Chinese restaurant, they use minced squab or dry oyster, but I use a shrimp. I want to show you how easy it is to cut the shrimp. You have lined them all up, 
chop them all up like this, and you'll cut it in half like this. Can you see how I do it? One, two, three. And you put them all together, and you go. <laughs> Done. See? All very simple. And then you marinate it with a tiny bit of cornstarch, with a tiny bit of cornstarch, and marinate it with a tiny bit of salt, which is already marinated, and also a tiny bit of wine. Mix it up in cornstarch, and get ready to cook, OK? And I want to show you, this is very easy to do. You chop up some carrot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the meantime, I am going to heat up the burner. Ooh, good. And then, how easy it is to julienne this. Look at this. Julienne. And then after julienne, you cut it up. So you cut into little chunks, like this. See, how easy. Carrot. You can also do this with zucchini, any vegetable. One, two, three, four. OK. Put them all together. Set it aside. It's very easy to do. You should do this all together. <laughs> never, never do it in the last minute. Otherwise, you drive them nuts. You should all do it together. Also, get a tiny little green onion. Put it all together. One, two, three, four, five. Do you think you can? You're the only one that's smoking? Look at this darn thing is smoking, too. <laughs> that means the wok is exceptionally hot. If that happens, you should turn down the heat or lift the wok out. Now, show you how easy. When the wok is hot, put a tiny bit of garlic and ginger if you have. If you don't want to bother, don't worry. Put a tiny bit. This is the shrimp. Stir fry. Stir fry this. Shrimp doesn't take too long to cook, so you don't have to worry about it. And then put the vegetable, all of this vegetable. I have about a quarter of a cup of mushroom, quarter of a cup of carrot, quarter of a cup or one small carrot, one small zucchini, and then also quarter of a cup of water chestnut. Stir fry. And then put a tiny bit of chicken broth. Wow, look at this. Make sure it's nice and cooked. And then put the seasoning. White pepper and a tiny bit of salt. OK. Sprinkle about one to two teaspoons of soy sauce if you want. And then thicken this up with cornstarch. Because if it's too runny, it will be very difficult to serve. When you serve it, my lion's head is talking to me. In the last minute, you put a tiny bit of pine nut. Sprinkle pine nut over there, give it a nice texture. And then it is ready. I want to show you how easy it is to serve. Now, look at this. Shut this off. This is how you serve. Look at this. Lettuce wrap. Put a tiny, tiny bit of hoisin sauce or sweet bean paste. And then you wrap this up. Pull it like this. Make sure when you do this, don't hold it too tight. Otherwise, it might break. And let the shrimp beat the wrap. Make sure. <laughs> then you'll eat it like a burrito. Delicious. Now, or if you want to do it, you can do it like this. Wrap them all up for your guests. Put them in a group so everybody can pick up one. OK? This is another way to do it. This is definitely the first Chinese rep group. Look at this. This is beautiful. Now we have two wonderful symbolic Chinese New Year dishes for you to enjoy. Of course, no Chinese New Year is complete without a parade or lion dance. So let's all go to one of the parade. Chinese New Year is the most important festival in the lunar calendar. We celebrate it with lion dancing. We have more than 4,000 years of practice. That's why we never miss a beat. Nothing to it. See how many people can do it? And there is the dragon. The dancing is taking up the whole street. 
We light the firecrackers and wish each other gong hei fa choi, a happy and prosperous new year. Happy new year! Next, we will do another very symbolic dish. Red envelope fish. Red envelope fish. Fish also have a very symbolic meaning. This is fish fillet. Normally, you do the whole fish. I'm going to slice. This one have the skin. While I'm doing it, I'm heat up the wok with a lot of oil because we're going to quickly fry this into golden brown. You see that I cut it in an angle like this. Open it up right close to the skin, but not cutting through it. And then after that, I turn it around 90 degree. I go one, two, three. You see this? And then I can hold on to it. It will look like this. Look at this. You see that? Like a pine cone. And then I quickly dip this into flour, salt this, and pepper and salt this, and marinate this. And then I also would dip it into egg, OK? Dip it into egg. And then once again, dip it back here. We're going to deep fry this until they're nice and golden brown. Now when you deep fry it, you deep fry it like this. Look at this. You see how I put it down? Put down the, the center first, and then I laid it down. See this? Very carefully. Don't put your hand there. Don't get too excited. And then <laughs> put. Sometimes I get very excited. Oh, my God. <laughs> Almost. Fortunately. And then you get ready a strainer and a cooking chopstick. OK? While you're doing this, we're going to make a sauce. This sauce has half a cup of sweet pickle. This is sweet pickle, OK? And about half a cup of rice vinegar or red wine vinegar. We'll put it right over here, OK? And some sugar, about two to three tablespoons of sugar. And also pickle. We're going to make a sauce to make and stir this about two to three tablespoons of ketchup. Right in here. OK. Make a little sauce. OK. This is going to be the red envelope. When I say red envelope fish, I'm not saying that after the fish is done, I'm going to stuck the darn thing into this red envelope. <laughs> what I'm saying is a symbolic meaning. Fish in Cantonese is you. It means abundance. Abundance, that means if I offer you this fish today, I wish you, I'm offering you abundance of wealth and prosperity. Isn't that wonderful? Stir in a tiny bit of cornstarch. When it is done, the sauce is nice and ready. You would take this out and put it into this wonderful platter with the fish head. Can you see that? Now, normally, as I said, you would do it by serving the whole fish with the bone. But today, we we'll want to serve the filet. Put this nice, wonderful sauce right here. This is my red envelope. I make no bones about it, so I serve a fish filet. <laughs> and then look at how wonderful. This done thing is nice and done. Look at how gorgeous it looks. Isn't that nice? Let it drain really well. And then we set aside, put it right here. Let it drain really well. Oh, nice and golden brown. Make sure the oil is hot enough. I serve you crystal wrap. I serve you lion's head. I serve you jai, which is Buddha's delight. Everything we have today, it is so much Chinese New Year, so symbolic. Everything I show you today, it is very typical of a Chinese New Year dish. Look at this. I'm going to slide this right over here. Look at this. Gorgeous looking fish. And this, what it is, is nice. Put the fish tail back. I save it specifically for you. Just like a whole <laughs> fish. Put a tiny bit of seaweed on the side to make it look gorgeous. You see? Yeah. Now, <laughs> another dish. Another dish that are rich in symbolism is this handful of go corn. What it is is braised duck web with mushroom. The mushroom is nice and round. It's symbolic of go corn. So I will offer you, this is also my mother's most favorite dish. Look, I want to introduce you to my mother. There she is. 
aside from that, I want to offer you today the Mandarin Orange in China. When they visit people and friends and relatives around Chinese New Year, they always offer them a little red envelope with money inside to wish them good luck and good fortune. So today, I thank you so much for joining me to celebrate Chinese New Year. Before I go, let's practice one more time. Gong hei fa choi. If Good. If Yan can, so can you. Joy kin. Gong hei fa choi.